Good evening, everybody. Hello. So good to see Playhouse people again. It's awesome. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, last year we had a, a delay in getting people through the door and our volunteers have really fine-tuned the system this year, so yay, volunteers. So 7.03, we have everybody seated, that's awesome. Uh, so we are following uh, the governor's orders and if you're roaming around, please wear your mask. If you're sitting down, that's, that's your choice. As you see, we have the seats spread apart and uh, we do have a Porta John under the, its own little tent over here, if you need that. It has a sink, it has hand sanitizer, so I think we got all that covered. Um, was, was that? Oh, <laughs> I thought we had public comment already. <laughs> so we, um, we will, as we get into public comment, uh, Gary has a, of course Gary has figured out a way to put a microphone on a stick and he can bring that around to you if, you, there you go. <laughs> Nothing gets by Gary, he's, he's got it figured out. And he even has the magic wand sterilizer, so in between people's comments he will sterilize the microphone. So we've got all that covered. Uh, so we're going to get started, and uh, I am going to turn it over to Chris Radu, our board president, uh, to start the meeting. There's your mic. There's your sterilized mic over there. Okay. Uh, I want to thank everyone. <laughs> They're shipping more patrons in for us. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming here uh, this evening uh, and supporting the theater, uh, board members, volunteers, committee members. Uh, everyone's efforts here are what make the Playhouse possible. And with what we're facing today, uh, we need everyone's efforts in order to keep the Playhouse uh, moving forward. I was thinking about this, that you know we're a community theater, and currently we're told not to be a community. As a nation, as a world, as a state, we're supposed to be Kevin Bacon. You know, six degrees, six feet of separation. I'm trying to get a laugh here, somebody. All right. And that is. That's why I'm not on stage, ever, in case anyone wondered. Um, but with that being said, you know, if we step back from everything that's happening, we're very fortunate. Our collective efforts have allowed us to find a way to get to the other side of COVID. You, you read in the papers, you know, 12 shows, 12 theaters on Broadway, Lights out. Those shows are never going to open again. They're backed by wealthy investors with a profit motive. We're a nonprofit. If they can't survive, how can we survive? And yet here we are. I think it's a combination of creativity, innovation, donation. Those are all things we're used to. That's what got us here in the first place. That's what's gonna keep us here when this is over. Everyone's played their part in this. We use that a lot. And that's been very true. As the situation evolved and opportunities arose, your staff worked tirelessly to take advantage of every one of those programs for the benefit of the institution and everyone involved with it. For those of you that are aware of the PPP program, staff worked so hard that we were actually in on round one of that. If there wouldn't have been a round two, the Playhouse would have been an institution that would have gotten those funds. 
There are numerous small businesses in the area, there's articles in the Record Eagle about it that didn't make it in on round one. They weren't organized enough or they didn't have the staff to be able to see it through and a nonprofit institution that you're a part of found the way to do that. It's amazing. The SBA has brought about an economic disaster relief loan. If you call the number, you're going to be 1,200th in line to get an answer from somebody on the other end of the phone who just graduated with an economics degree four months ago who has no idea how to answer your question or fix anything in regards to your program. But again, the tireless efforts of people involved with the institution made it possible for us to take advantage of that. That gives us additional funding. We've got a 30-year time frame on it. I just got done signing my life away in regards to it. And there's three other people that did as well. All part of the board, trying to buy us enough time. When you see something like this, it's going to be about who can hold their breath the longest. Because at some point, the water level is going to go down and we're going to get our head back above water. But again, the efforts in the organization of everyone that's a part of this institution leading up to this moment is the only reason that we have the ability to do that. We came into this crisis with the highest cash balance in years. If we hadn't been in that position, we wouldn't be having this meeting. Think about that. There'd be a for sale sign in front of this building. It'd be over. You know, we wouldn't be worrying about what plays we're going to be putting on when we get back, how we were going to vote. There wouldn't be a vote. But we have the luxury that there is. And again, that's because of everyone that's in this parking lot right now. It's because of your passion, your dedication, that we're going to get to the other side of this. And I can assure you that everyone on the board is doing everything they can to try to make those words true, including myself. And if you've got an idea about something we can do even better, great. Let's hear it. Let's get that creativity going. We're going to need it. Last thing I'm going to say is, is Broadway has already said it's going to be 2021 before there's another show. And that might be optimistic. But we're still trying to do things to remain relevant. Open mic nights, events at wineries. We'll try to do something at Boathouse again this year. We need you to make that possible. There's a lot of synergies we can create to help the local community because local businesses are suffering just as much as we are. And if we work together, then we're going to be better for it. We're going to strengthen our community. And that's what this place is supposed to be about. So with that said, again, I want to thank all of you. The fact that you're here in the face of this and with this over your face, that passion, that dedication, that's what's going to get us to the other side of this. I appreciate all of your efforts. Speaking of the board, I'm going to try to find everybody and I'm going to use the roster just so I don't miss anybody. We have Peg, who's walking in the back. Hopefully you all casted a vote for her. We'd like to have her back. The PPP loan would have been really difficult to do without her. Uh, we've got Chuck, he's our treasurer. We have Marcy, he's our secretary. We have Nick, right there. We have Paul. And in case everybody doesn't realize, we have the most diverse, experienced board that we've had, I think, ever, with HR, attorney, 
financial guidance, organizational guidance, and that's helped us a lot through all of this as well. We, we've got a stronger board than some businesses in town, which is just great to see. Uh, I did not see Nancy. Nancy's not here. Uh, we have Rita. Recently joining us is Kerr. Karen is right there. Bruce, right up front. I got them all. No, oh, Judy, cheese, oh, pizza. See, I went out of order. Judy, she stood right next to me. Again, thank you all for your efforts, uh, your creativity and the programs and the connections that you bring to the board uh, has given us uh, the flexibility uh, to be able to work through this environment. Appreciate all of your efforts and look forward to continuing to serve with you, especially Peg, after this election. So the first item of business is to approve the minutes from last year's annual meeting, um, which is a year ago, but hopefully we can all remember that. Uh, the minutes were in the packet that hopefully the volunteers gave you when you came in. Uh, and I did get a call today, someone who couldn't attend, but they went through this with a fine tooth comb. And they did find uh, on the second page under Young Company, uh, there's just some typos. And the last sentence should uh, read, spring classes will look at all levels of classes and put together one show. So just some typos in that line that we found. Um, any other corrections to the minutes that people found? So I would love to entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Bruce, a second. Brett, uh, just a raise of hands. All in favor, say aye. Anyone opposed? Great, because if you opposed it, we'd have you take minutes for next time. <laughs> so that, that passes. Thank you very much. Uh, and Marcy is over here taking minutes for this year. Uh, the next thing that we, uh, tradition that we do is we do the introduction of candidates first so that the ballots can all be collected. I saw most of them were already collected, but that gives the, um, the team of, pe uh, t again, team of volunteers who are going to go in and count all the ballots for us. So um, r running for the, uh, so every year there is one seat open that is elected by the membership. And this year <coughs> it's Peg's uh, term that is up and she is running for re-election and she is running unopposed. Uh, you can write in a candidate if you would like, uh, but she is our one official candidate. For the artistic committee, we have a lot of action happening there. We normally would have had, or we had four normal term seats that were going to come up for election this year. And then over the weekend, we had a resignation of someone who was supposed to stay on the committee, um, Sarah Hartley. And so what we're going to do there is we will take the top four vote getters, we'll take over those regular three-year seats. The fifth highest vote getter will take over the one year left on Sarah's term. And then next year that person would be eligible to run again for a regular three-year term. So we decided because of COVID um, and because of trying to handle microphones, we're not doing speeches from the floor this year. Uh, but we did several times send out the bios. But I would like the candidates to stand up. You probably know all of them anyway, but look, um, just to be sure. So Brett Nichols. <laughs> Caroline Hogan, I don't think I saw. Oh, there she is. Okay. <laughs> John Plow. I think that John had a conflict and sent in his email vote. Leslie Ty. Lisa Blackburn, Matt Archibald, I don't think Matt's here, he did email his vote in as well. So Matt is currently on the committee and he is running for re-election. And Terry Heffron. So we're really, uh, really blessed here at the Playhouse that we have seven very talented, passionate people who are 
running for uh, the, the committee and want to serve a three-year term. So we have very good people to choose from and we probably can't go wrong with any of your votes. Um, but at this time, if you have not turned in your ballot, can you raise your hand and the volunteers collecting them will come around uh, and get those from you? Anyone not turned in their ballot yet? Okay. We will send them to the dungeon to do their work. <laughs> Um, Paul Jarbo, could you come up here in case there's questions about bylaws? Bill Rita. <laughs> so, um, I first want to take this this moment to apologize for the confusion that happened leading up to this meeting. It truly was inadvertent. It was never meant to cause stress or to count anybody out in any way. You know, it's just, I'm sick of this phrase, but everybody keeps using it. It's unprecedented times. Uh, we're trying to balance um, the COVID situation with what's in the bylaws that may need updating with um, what's in our policies and procedures, which we also, as we started opening this Pandora's box, we found that needed some correction as well. Um, with the fact that the email list that was used for the last couple years to announce the meeting and tell you that you could vote by email wasn't getting to all the members. In fact, there were board members who didn't even get it. So it just turned into Pandora's box once we opened it up. And we apologize for that. We um, did, we think, rectify it and um, hopefully got out enough communication about that. But truly, we didn't mean to be difficult. It was just a, it's a kind of a crappy year. <laughs> so I just want to say that before, before we start out. But it's a perfect lead into the fact that uh, the board has been looking at bylaws and has discovered things that really are out of date and out of step with, with the world today, with society today, and how the Playhouse op, um, operates. You know, there's things like, it is directed in there that we have to advertise our meetings through Record Eagle. How many of you read Record Eagle every day? So there's things like that that really, really need to be updated to get in sync with our, how we live today, how our society lives today. Um, so in the bylaws, uh, and jump in here anytime, Paul. In the in the bylaws uh, to oh, change. You're doing great, Deb. You're just doing great. To change the bylaws, we have to uh, have first have the board vote to approve the changes. We need to get that out to the membership with 30 days um, advance of their vote to go through it. Um, and it just it just didn't happen on that timeline. So what we want to do today, and in the spirit of true transparency, is we want to tell you um, the, the areas that we're looking at that we've identified already that need updating so that you're aware of that. And at the August meeting, um, Paul, Paul heads up our bylaws and nominations committee. Um, and on that committee with him are Kerr and Karen. And so they will go through it again based on um, what, what we've learned in the last week and uh, you know just go through it again to make sure we're covering everything present that to the board in August and then we'll have to figure out how to let everybody vote on that we haven't figured that out but we will we will get it public we will get it out to you and we'll figure out if we can do an email vote or you know we heavenly if we could open back up and have a meeting inside we just don't know yet but we do want to assure you that we will follow that process and be transparent with the information. So the overall objective when the committee started looking at this was just to, to clarify things that are not clear. Um, there was confusion because when we, we talk about, just as an example, when we talk about the tradition that this meeting is always held in June, well, it does say that in one place that the meeting should be held in June. In another place, it says that the fiscal year is June 30th. Um, and in another place, it talks about membership and voting. And so it, it's in there, but it's not maybe clear enough. So then you layer on that the protocol of the meeting always had been before fiscal year ends so that we could keep it within the fiscal year. Um, so 
there were a lot of a lot of things that go together to make what we what, the way we operate. And so we want to clarify. Um, we want to bring it current with the way we operate the playhouse and also with wh how society works. So some of the main areas that we're uh, looking at are to clarify the membership, to update our standing committees. There's standing committees that are listed in there that we don't even have. Um, <clears throat> provide some flexibility for the annual meeting. Have, you know, God forbid we have to go through COVID again, but at least give the board some flexibility that should something happen that we have to move the meeting. We don't have to jump through all those hurdles again. So provide some flexibility there. Um, and flexibility in meeting notification. You know, we are using social media and we, and we want to we use email and we want to use all the means possible to get information to you, not just the record ego. <laughs> so, so we want to bring those kind of things up to date. Is there anything else, Paul, that you want to say? Yeah, and how's everybody doing tonight? Everybody okay? Okay, uh, where's my guitar? I can pretend I'm Johnny Cash. <laughs> where's a <laughs> Gary. Gary job? Okay, so really, as Deb's indicated, what we want to do is a deep dive into the current bylaws. When we broke them open and looked, we could tell they had been. It's kind of like putting flooring on top of flooring on top of flooring, and ultimately you've got to strip it all away and kind of clean it up. And so that's what the bylaws committee has done over the past several months. We have a draft now which we'll present to the Board of Trustees during our August meeting. We think that will be August 18th. The current bylaws provide that in order to amend the bylaws, it's a two-step process. First, it's a vote uh, by the Board of Trustees to approve the changes. And then secondly, they're presented to the membership, which is us, you folks. And uh, we're looking for a majority vote or approval of the uh, membership. So again, it's a two-step process. We expect that um, we'll be able to provide the proposed amended bylaws to the membership probably in August. Um, the current bylaws are on the, on the uh, Old Town Playhouse website. So if you want to take a look at those and see what those say, and, and then you'll be able to compare them to the new uh, proposed bylaws. I think it's, I think Deb's done a good job at summarizing some of the changes. Just briefly, from my seat, it's going to the new bylaws will give the board more flexibility in terms of scheduling board meetings and also the annual meeting. It also will redefine the membership into one type of membership. Currently, there's a voting and a non-voting membership, and we don't really know why. So we want everybody to be voting members. So that we're proposing a change. And then some structure changes in terms of the committee assignments. So any questions, we're happy to address those at the next board meeting or emails to the Playhouse, and they'll be forwarded to me. I'll be happy to see if I can answer those questions. Okay. And, uh, the, the current bylaws are, are on our website. You have to go to boards and, com and committees and or board of trustees, and then if you get to that page, it's all the way towards the bottom. Bot. <laughs> about about the playhouse board of trustees and then at the very bottom of that page are the bylaws and then also the policies and procedures right. document which also needs updating so so that's where you would find the current documents and again we just promise that we will get information out to you as we have it So again, a part of the annual meeting is to go through the uh, financial status of the Playhouse. Uh, so you all know where, how the year has been, where we're at today. And to do that, we're going to turn the mics over to our treasurer, Chuck Mazur, and um, our vice president, um, Peg Brace. According to Betsy's phone, it's going to start raining in 65 minutes. So, so don't don't. Uh, don't watch the lights. Don't watch the lights. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you can't talk about
I was just checking on something that I thought I could say, but I can't say. But what I can say is that as part of the finance uh, stuff, we've been trying to apply for, as you heard, grants, loans, and so forth. We've applied for an Impact 100 grant. Uh, we're one of many groups that have applied for it. Uh, and uh, we're supposed to hear by Thursday, tomorrow, whether or not we're one of the finalists. Because what they do is they narrow it down to five finalists and then they, go, they have their, their annual meeting, and then three of those five finalists will get funded. We've actually requested about $103,000 to do some major improvements that we want to get done here at the Playhouse. So we're, and we, and we had the in-person meeting already, and it went very, very nicely. And uh, so we're hopeful, but we'll find out tomorrow whether we're one of the top five, and then go on to the next meeting, and hopefully we'll be one of the top three. So we, we are going out for different programs, uh, trying to find funding during this tough time uh, where we can find funding. All your donations obviously help us sub substantially, but we need some major infrastructure improvements too, so we're looking for money wherever we can find money. We also have a donation jar, by the way, as you walk <laughs> out. Um, from a financial point of view, one of the things I wanted to point out was uh, we have worked very hard, uh, you know, the staff, uh, the board, um, volunteers, on trying to get us uh, above six months cash on hand. And we actually got quite a bit above that earlier this year because we hadn't had all the impacts yet. And now we're starting to drop back down. We're still just over the six months, which is good, but it's going to continue to go this way unless we can have some shows and have some revenue and have some more things going on. Uh, but we are in not bad shape right now. But again, as Chris said, we could always be in better. We're in better shape than a lot of places out there. And so I think it's worked really well for us. We're still at about six and a half months of cash on hand at this stage. It is going down quite a bit. So at some point in time, we will uh, experience uh, uh, where we hopefully, where we won't have to be, but we're trying to get these plays going and things happening. Uh, from a general um, discussion, we've had a lot of, obviously, the, the plays were canceled. Um, the uh, spring camps and classes were canceled. Um, we uh, are, are moving forward to try and get this all done for the Impact 100. Uh, for a year-end loss, without the grant money for any any, reserva any renovations and trades was 190000 for the loss this year. Uh, compared to last year, we were down 383000 uh, We did receive the full uh, amount that we asked for from the uh, e EDIL and the, uh, and the SBA, so we're working very hard on that. Just a few comments. We, d we did receive a few donations during the pandemic. Uh, and that was very nice, but because we didn't have a gala, you know, which we raised a lot of money there. Uh, so we're still uh, looking for more money as always, you know, and we'll continue looking for, for more funding. Um, the donated goods are down because, again, no, no gala. Ticket sales are lower because of the pandemic. Um, we've been watching, uh, staff has been watching very closely all of our expenses. Uh, and uh, obviously our printing and production costs are down, which is good, but that's because we have no shows. Um, our rent is down because we rent where the, where the studio theater is, but that's obviously down because we're not using that right now, so that's worked out well for us. Um, we had some internet experience because we changed our expenses go going up. Um, that's because of our new uh, system that we put in place. Other than that, um, our government grants are still off, but hopefully they'll be coming back in next year. And uh, with that, I think we're not in terrible, terrible shape yet. Uh, but we want to continue with this fine building and uh, continue thinking about what we want to do in the future, uh, continue putting some plays on if we can. Um, I know you can't hardly see the sheet up here, but uh, it's not in bad shape, and if anybody has any questions, um, Peg does a great job of putting all the financial stuff together for us. Uh, I get it and then narrow it down to 
my one page report that I put out for the board uh, but you all have that so that's good um, are there any questions or comments of myself or of Peg yes I can't I can't hear you it's and we have had some individuals contributing so which is very nice uh, we had a couple that actually wrote checks and I, and I received them and then I turned them back in uh, they said because there was no gala this is what I would have given that gala anyways so I'm giving it to you now that's very nice so thank you for all that yes Let me turn it over to you. Uh, so, unfortunately, we uh, we did have to lay off Colleen. You know, when the building's closed, you don't need an office manager. Um, and then the rest of the staff is um, down to four-day work weeks. So we are addressing what the what the work needs are. Um, we didn't. We, we didn't uh, just lay everybody off because we are trying to do some things um, you know, like the theater under the tent, like uh, the podcasts and virtual performances in the fall, which can be part of the uh, fundraising strategy. Uh, we have some more communications going out on fundraising, such as, you know, Gala in and of itself netted $100,000 last year. So, you know, right out of the chute, that's $100,000 off the book. So. If more people, you know, could look at the what they did last year for Gala and, and contribute some of that, that would be a huge help. Um, so we are evaluating. We, we um, have someone who is going to is willing to help us with an online auction, and we are looking for items to auction. Uh, we have some artwork, um, and it were, we would love to get some more items for that. Um, Rita and Nancy Brick have been helping put together. Uh, winery events in August and um, what this will be and Brett's tremendously helpful in this we will partner with a winery and um, have a special event for Old Town Playhouse it would be a ticketed event and uh, Brett has a, a traveling troupe essentially that would perform at the event um, and then again additional donations from that so we're kind of piecing together several different ideas on what Yep, so piecing together several different things. Um, jumping ahead, this, the tent is one of them. We have, over the course of the next six weeks, we have quite a variety of shows that are happening. Uh, we will have some plays. Uh, in fact, this week, we're going to have the Mr. and Mrs. Dungeon are going to perform Love Letters, and then next week, the Nichols are going to do it. So we have some plays lined up. Um, we had we had hoped to restage Love Loss and What I Wore up here because it's a small cast and it was so successful at the studio in February when you can hardly park there. Um, but the cast, when they got up here and figured out the spacing and what they would have to do to be safe, it, it just wasn't going to work. So we're exploring other other shows that are maybe two people, three people that could fit up here and do that. So trying to piece together as much as we can under the tent uh, through over the next six weeks and then see what we can do from the inside with online auctions, virtual performances, and that kind of thing. Yeah, so it's really been a great, um, we've seen some great partnership from the community. I mean, we have several musicians who perform in the community. Um, next week, uh, David Chowan and Doc Probes have put together an act that they're going to do for us. Um, the symphony, as Chuck was alluding to, groups from within the symphony are doing several um, per different performances. Um, and one of those it turned out to be a very interesting situation. We can't charge for that particular one because they, they are getting a grant to do that performance for us. But what we'll do is reach out to our top donors first and say, hey, we have this event just for our donors. and hopefully try and solicit some donations from that. So trying to work it from every angle that we can.
Yes, there was a fundraising letter that was going to go out uh, this week, but then when Pandora's box opened up with the voting and the confusion, that got tabled till probably um, end of this week, ne early next week that that will go out. Thank you, Kathy. Any other questions or comments or seeing none? Thanks for coming tonight. Don't forget the jar is open as you, as you go out later on. Um, I guess we're done. Gary? So one more comment that I would like to make on the financials that were presented is that we, as has been said by Chris and by Chuck, we were very lucky that the board was diligent over the last year and built up a fund balance that allowed us to stay open and not just shut the doors. So you, on one hand, you sit at a board meeting and think, oh, we've got you know six months of cash on hand. That sounds really great. Then you think, if we can't open until 2021, oh, that's six months away, and then we're out of money and have nothing to open with. So we, we do have the luxury of having some cash on hand, but we need to do those fundraising things so that we will have money to open up great shows when we can open. So. All right. So uh, just a couple of other highlights in the Pulse of the Playhouse that I thought I would um, go through. Um, obviously, this probably doesn't need to be said, but when all this started, we thought it was just an intermission. And Gary put up uh, a sign on our marquee that said, you know, see you after this short intermission. The short intermission basically turned into a suspended season. And uh, theaters will be in the last phase of opening. And it doesn't mean that we can just, you know, turn on the lights and start a show because we'll have to get directors, who will have to get cast, who will have to rehearse. So there's going to be some lead time. And basically, we're, you know, if you're, if you're being realistic about it, we won't have anything on stage until 2021. We had uh, tried to recruit a director to put together a holiday extravaganza thinking, wouldn't it be glorious if we could open the Playhouse with a holiday show, upbeat, People are going to be so ready for it, um, and we didn't get anybody willing to do that. And I understand that because you can't exactly postpone a holiday show. It has a set time frame, and it's a lot of work to put into it. So realistically, um, we will not have a show until 2021. We are looking at what smaller shows we could do to start with, and then we are just really looking forward to doing Chicago in April or May of next year. So. So I wanted to touch a little bit more on the grants that were mentioned. Um, we, with the help of um, Betsy Willis out there somewhere, we have submitted um, three or four more grants this year than we normally do. And one of the really exciting pieces of information is thanks to uh, the Biederman Foundation and the Worthington Family Foundation, we got enough money to do uh, electronic larger marquees on both sides of the building. And that is huge. That is huge from a marketing standpoint because you know now we've got great traffic that goes by this building all day long. And we have so many things that go on in this building from young company to shows to studio to age perfection. There is no way for Gary to keep coming out here and changing that sign. So we were really missing an opportunity to promote everything that was going on in this building. So we are super excited about that. And that is in work. I think it takes about six weeks for the marquees to actually be um, built and brought over. So um, that's a very exciting thing. Uh, and as Chuck talked about, um, the Impact 100, you know, is very exciting. That's $103,000. If you're not familiar with how Impact 100 works, uh, they take applications they divide them into the five focus areas that they have. Then those focus committees pick one to send on to be a finalist. Uh, and that is the information that will be announced publicly tomorrow. So also very excited about that. And that money would be to fix things in the auditorium, like lights and sound, um, finish the LED lighting project, really great things that would enhance our performances in the auditorium. So 
the tent is a, a big thing that um, we are excited about, and I want to thank Gary for this idea. You guys know Gary, and you know, he's a quiet soul, and then we're sitting in a staff meeting, and he quietly says, you know, we could put a tent in the parking lot. But yes, we could put a tent in the parking lot. <laughs> so, um, you know, thank you for, for Gary coming up with this idea. And we will have plays, as I said. We will have music events. Um, we will have, uh, frankly, Sinatra next week, and then the first week of August, uh, the Old Town Home Companion, which is a play on Prairie Home Companion, and that's a combination of Doc and Donna probes, you know, like they did the Grant, the Old Town Opry a year ago that was very successful. This, this like that, it's a variety show, and several of our Old Town Playhouse um, veterans will be involved in that. Uh, showstoppers will be up here, and then several of our musicians, some from the symphony. We have a jazz quartet. Uh, a, a symphony orchestra bass quintet, brass quintet, uh, a chamber um, music put, uh, ensemble, and brass with piano. So a lot of different musical uh, events that, that will be great fun. Most of the events we'll, we're going to charge $20. Uh, the open mic night is free. We are asking people to still get tickets online just so that we know how many people are coming and we can control the, the socially distant uh, seating arrangement. So. I was remiss in doing this last year, and now I really need to do it because, um, as Chris mentioned, the staff is working really hard and working, you know, they're working equally as hard even one, not, not being paid for one day a week. So um, I really want to recognize them. So Phil, I'll start with Phil. You know, we have really wanted uh, a dedicated artistic manager at Old Town Playhouse for a while, and Phil was wearing that hat along with all the operational executive director um, roles. And so now Phil is our dedicated artistic manager. Um, he also is still our computer guy, so he is still wearing a couple hats there. But uh, you know, Gary is our guy with many, many hats who runs a lot of things here. And again, I credit with this idea of theater under the tent. <clears throat> Michelle Hopkins, who is, is here somewhere. Um, there she is. <laughs> she is our um, education director, and she also stepped up to the plate this past year and directed ELF, which was our big money maker of the past season. So thank you for that. Um, Paul, who probably isn't out here because either he's still sitting, is he? Oh, he's inside. Um, you know, Paul is just the guy that everybody loves and really puts on a great face of the organization. And he's the box office manager, and he also really led the theater manager, our new ticketing and CRM system implementation. And that was no easy task. There's still flip charts all over the conference room. That was a big task, and he really led that effort. <laughs> Melissa, Melissa is our gal with many hats because she's been She's been our box office assistant, uh, our young company assistant, uh, chair of the volunteer committee, and just always willing to help out in any way we need her to. Um, <clears throat> I know that Michelle will talk about it, but uh, the, the young company team, um, the m and Dynamo team that I call them, and really a lot due to uh, Melissa's work online, they put together a virtual, vir virtual young company summer camp the for four week camp in June and July and that was very successful a lot of families dropped out and said that they didn't want to do another online thing but the kids that stayed in loved it and, and just it was so great to hear their voices even though it was you know on a, a computer screen down the hall um, they got very good feedback on that and the great thing was I every week I'm in a, a webinar with the uh, American Association of Community Theaters and one week they had a special about how to do kids programming online. And I'm sitting there listening to it and they're like, well, you gotta use Google Classroom and not Zoom. Check Melissa's on it. You gotta have, you got, we, we sent out a couple um, things in advance. Well, 
our team delivered a box to every house the weekend before the camp started of the props and different things that they would need. So it was like, you're just going down the line, we're like, we got this. Ours was really high quality, so thank you for that. We have, <clears throat> we have a temporary um, uh, marketing manager, her name is Lisa Wenlin, and this came about interesting. We had been, we had planned to hire a marketing manager. That got put on the back burner when COVID happened. But then we discovered that there was an amount of money that we were going to lose in the PPP because we didn't have the right headcount to match up to our seasonal help last year. So instead of losing that money, uh, we're using that money to um, have Lisa be our temporary marketing manager. She's been doing all the social media stuff. Hopefully you've noticed that we're a lot more active there. And her, the plan is that she will lay a good foundation for us to work from um, when we are back up and running. And I just want to, I just, I just want to say again that even though um, Peg is not officially staff, she is in there with me every day working on all the financial things to get all of the, the, this government money and different programs and. Um, just couldn't do it without Peg, so thank you. And I also want to do special thanks to Colleen. Um, what a trooper, even though, um, even though during this time we didn't need an office manager per se, I mean, she has the OTP spirit in her. She's here, she was part of the vote counting team and uh, just a true OTP spirit, so thank you, Colleen. I thought I would just touch real quickly on the strategic plan. I feel like I'm talking a lot here, but um, the board met in uh, last November and put together a three-year strategic plan. And I, just, I should say that I know you can't see this very well, but um, our Don is going to take the slides and actually overlay them on the video, and when we get that posted, you'll be able to see this information better. <clears throat> but we're working on uh, increasing our endowment, uh, so we're including that with all of our uh, donation or uh, development efforts. We always mention the, um, the endowment as an option. One of the th plans was to increase our grants, and I talked about that, that we did three more this year and so far have been successful, and thank Betsy for her help on that. Um, our relationship management with the new system, um, as we start using that more for communication and we start doing more events, like the Bose House event, really developing the donor relationship. Um, Facilities, we really, we went through the building and uh, identified anything that, that really, from a safety standpoint point or an absolute need had to, be, had to be done and we've been taking care of those things. And then Gary put together the package of what would really make the theater awesome in terms of sound and lighting and, and that was the package that we used for Impact 100. Um, staffing, the changes I talked about, we really have identified that we're so lucky to have PEG, but we probably can't count on PEG forever here. So we need to get a business manager in place and we need to get a marketing manager in place at some point in the future when we can do that. Um, studio, uh, we hope to, we're not doing studio this year. The main reason was even when theaters can open up, that space is so small that to be any semblance of social distancing, we wouldn't really have an audience. To so we just knew that couldn't happen this year. But I'm looking forward to working with the new artistic committee to um, develop a strategy for studio. What are we, you know, that's a great place that we can maybe um, entice new audiences. So, so working on that and also working on what is our quality standard and our, 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 um, you know, what is the standard we want to achieve and what metrics do we use to measure that. Uh, young company, they have lots of ideas, but again, space is very limited, so I think the whole, this whole virtual thing, now that they've got that down, that's going to open up other opportunities for us in the young company. Membership, we've been trying to do more things like buy one, get one free, and different things for membership throughout the year. 
So that's kind of a, a quick overview on the strategic plan. And now I would like to um, spotlight the different, the different committees and have those people come up just real quick and, and give us a few um, overviews on that. So we'll start with the artistic committee and Nick Viax. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see all of your faces. Well, half of them, and the other half, I'm just assuming you're smiling. Great. Um, so on my very first time running for the Artistic Committee, I read my speech from my phone that I had written that day um, sitting in the auditorium because Jamie Lamont had told me that I needed to say a speech. So I did the exact same thing today. I'm consistent, wrote it right now, and I'm just gonna do it real quick to, for a quick update. So straight from my phone again. Here we go, millennials. Um, thank you, thank you for the one woo. Um, I would like to update you with what the Artistic Committee has accomplished over the past year and how these workings will benefit the future of the Playhouse. First, I'd like to acknowledge the current Artistic Committee. So if you don't mind rising, I will call you out and we can hold applause for the end. We have Elizabeth Stewart, Jamie Lamont, Maria McCain, Bill Fishburn, Matt Archibald, Sarah Hartley, and Phil Murphy. And Cherie Van Manen. Thank you, thank you, I'm sorry. I, I, I can't count. So, um, over, over the past year, the Artistic Committee has been working on refining the bylaws that make up the AC and streamlining the selection process of the shows that make up the season. This new process includes specific reading groups that highlight each Artistic Committee member's interests, talents, and knowledge, a formal process for curation and review, um, and record keeping of each show the Artistic Committee reviews, a scoring rubric for each show, and a detailed history of each Artistic Committee member's comments, scores, and contributions to those reviews. This process, we hope, will allow the decision-making for shows to be more structured and tangible. Thank you to all the Artistic Committee members and staff who have made this happen. I look forward to seeing how this, the work done by the Artistic Committee grows, so thank you. Um, lastly, I want to give a huge thank you to the Artistic Committee members that have provided years of service and artistic vision to this organization. Maria McCain, Jamie Lamont, Matt Archibald, and Sarah Hartley. Thank you all for being exemplary committee members and for making some amazing seasons happen at the Playhouse. The arts are a place of solace, escape, and comfort, and now more than ever, the arts have been a place for us to not hide the problems of the world that we're facing, but rather bring them to light. Art is about having conversations, meaningful ones, about challenging each other as artists and as humans. A bottom line must certainly be met, but never at the risk of losing that intention. Thank you to the outgoing Artistic Committee members that have been integral part of the starting conversations within this community for this arts organization. And a hearty welcome to those candidates that are voted in today that will keep the conversation going. Thank you. And also, thank you to Nick, whose term is also up, but has given us uh, years of good service as well, leading that committee, so thank you. So, Gary is gonna run up here with his magic wand, and then we're gonna hear from Melissa about uh, volunteer committee. people around this building you have no idea it's been really weird for months how quiet it's been so it's so good to see you um so firstly I'd like to start by thanking the volunteer committee we have a fantastic committee we have Bernadette uh, Grapusa. yeah uh, one day I'll get it right every time um, we have our first resigning member Danielle Hartley we miss you and we love you and we wish you'd come back also, Colleen hill Rakunas, Terry Heffron, Don Kuehlhorn, Annie Major, and I think, well, I, I'm getting to the new people. I think that's all the, yes. Denny Don Hunting, my lovely dearest back there. So then, yes, that is our current um, 
our current volunteer committee. And we have also just added Graham Brinklow and Colin Bohash. So we have some doodly dudes on our team now. Um, this year we've been working a lot on our workshop series, trying to bring other educational opportunities to our volunteers. And we do hope to continue that in the future, especially going hybrid and doing something virtual maybe with some action professional that we had to come speak with the young company because we can get them back. Uh, also, uh, Terry has brought forward this wonderful idea of a deputy program. So to help with the hierarchy throughout production, we will also have a deputy within the cast chosen by the cast that will be able to be a resource for our volunteers to turn to outside of the creative team and outside of staff so that you have multiple options and you can feel safe at every point so that we'll have more information coming forward with that over the next season uh it is in development at this time and i think that was all the stuff i had on yeah that's yeah volunteer committee So Melissa would love for people to volunteer and help out with the events, uh, the theater under the tent. Uh, a good example is concessions, and again, we try to simplify this and make it safe and easy. All of the uh, concessions are packaged, and they are what we had in inventory for the shows that didn't happen, and we put them out with a donation bucket, and so people just donate. Nobody has to touch any money or do anything like that, and, but we do need someone to be at that table. So, if you'd like to help out with any theater under the tent events, that would be great. Michelle, Young Company. You like my moon mask? Got it at Moomers. So if you're looking for someone to blame for COVID-19, uh, it's the young company's fault. Every time I do Macbeth, something bad happens. This year we started rehearsing Macbeth in January and look what happened. Yikes. All right. Uh, so um, we were sort of on track to break our own record for uh, the number of participants. We were at 260 students on March 13th when the governor made the announcement that school would be closed and then we ended up canceling and canceling and canceling. But at that point, we had had 260 uh, students in the, through the doors in the program between the classes and the performances and uh, we had just literally that day posted the cast list for Frozen, which was going to be huge. It's like the young company equivalent of Chicago, right? Um, so when we can do Chicago again, we're also going to be doing Frozen again. So yeah. Um, last summer at this time, we did um, Mary Poppins. Uh, we had a four week camp with 50 students and we had a double cast and we did three performances. This year we had 50 people signed up for our camp, but when we had to move to an online version, our number dropped to 18, even though we gave everyone a huge discount because we didn't want to charge them regular price for, you know, much reduced content. But what we ended up with were young people who really, really wanted to do camp so badly that they were willing to get online and do it on their computer. We even had a student in Colorado who was online at eight o'clock her time every morning to be at camp with us. Um, so that was amazing. And uh, as, uh, as Deb alluded to, we brought each student a box. Well, we had to ship the Colorado one, but we brought them a box and we had some activities that Annie Mazur uh, and I came up with so they could have some hands-on shop time. And so they built a flat and they built a sail and they decorated it. And uh, we did a sound exercise um, where they had to take a composer and create uh, a scene, uh, underscoring it with that composer's work. 
We did a lighting design where they took a gel and held it in front of their, their camera on their computer and then you know, did some dialogue uh, that was informed by the color of the gel. We, we really tried to do stuff that, that um, would engage and, and challenge them. Um, and I think it, it worked you know, in large part. But in the end, theater is really hard to do when you've got little window pane faces. And those of you that are teachers know exactly what I'm talking about. There's no exchange of energy. Um, and that's one of the best things about uh, working with students in a theater is that exchange of energy. So ultimately, even though I would say that change was successful, we determined that we would need to cancel the August camps. And so we had another 120 students that were lined up to take the one week camps in August that we are canceling. So when they talk about money that is going to start getting tight, <laughs> it's because all of those, those uh, tuitions that were already paid for now have to be refunded. So uh, we're looking at ways to incentivize their either donating that tuition or uh, taking a voucher and then using it next year. So I'm not a very good finance person. Uh, all you have to do is look at my checkbook or ask my husband. Um, and so this has really been challenging, but uh, um, Melissa will be taking over the challenges um, in September when I retire. But I am gonna stay on and do Frozen whenever that can happen. And uh, I'll be working with the rep company on Macbeth as soon as we're able to do that as well. So um, it's been a crazy year, but uh, I, it's just got to get better because um, what else is there, right? Right. I don't know if we're going to be in school in September, but if we are, then we will, um, we will have our classes and we will have our rehearsals and it'll be uh, with protocols in place, but we'll see how that goes. If we're not in class, then we'll still be online. There in numerous runouts throughout the holidays. In February, they presented Love Through the Ages in their standard Reader's Theater format in the Schmuckle Theater, and then pretty much were shut down. Uh, they, but they continued with the twice monthly meetings from last July all the way through to March. Now uh, the steering committee has met as needed and uh, currently there are new members on the steering committee. Kathy Lewis has joined the steering committee and so has Barbara Goodearl. Uh, they're joining along with Larry Haynes, David Ginsburg, and Karen McCoskey. Barbara Goodearl has also taken over the mantle of coordinator. And Annie Goodman has been named as the program initiative uh, lead. Uh, oh, great. There we go. Uh, a big thanks to uh, Margaret Ann Slauson, who has, uh, stepped, uh, who has stepped down as coordinator and a member of the steering committee. Uh, thanks to, uh, to her for all her efforts uh, in the last three years. Uh, they're also now ATP is looking at gearing up for some ongoing readings as we develop alternate uh, theater options and podcasts, whatever we can do going into the fall as they're comfortable and able to come back out again. And that's the update. How was that? Was that short enough for you? You know, ATP is just a shining example of what community theater is about because when all of this started, of course, one of my first thoughts was, oh my gosh, our seniors in Age of Perfection, how are they doing? Do we need to do anything for them? Do we need to organize groceries? And they're like, we got this. We're taking care of each other. There's at least a joke a day that comes through the email. I mean, they're just they're just really staying in community even though they can't physically be together so just a great a great group all right oh my god i looked at the light <laughs> can you do a drum roll from over there <laughs> so i have the election results 
and uh, we had 41 email votes turned in and 57 in-person votes, so for a total of 98 voting, excellent. And sh shocker, no surprise, uh, Peg was overwhelmingly supported to continue. I had one person today from Age to Perfection that called in their vote because they hit three times on the send and it kept bouncing back. And I said, I'll, I'll take it. And she said, well, of course, Peg, what would we do without her? And she's nice. <laughs> agree, totally agree. Okay, so for artistic committee, uh, I will give you these in order of highest votes. Uh, so Matt Archibald will continue on artistic committee. Leslie Ty will be joining Artistic Committee. Terry Heffron will be joining Artistic Committee. And Brett Nichols will be joining Artistic Committee. And then for that uh, goofy one-year slot that can uh, run again next year is um, John Plough. So I'm, I'm looking forward to working with that group. We're going we're gonna to have some good uh, thinking and planning and, and great shows on the horizon. So I need a motion to destroy the ballots. Kathy, a second. Phil, okay, there we go. Um, every, all in favor of des destroying the ballots? Any opposed? All right. Because otherwise you'd have to take them home with you and keep them for safekeeping. All right, so that... Um, that is most of the program. Uh, I just want to close. Um, Chris, I think, is going to come back up and say a few last words. But um, I just want to thank everyone for all that you do. Of course, we say that all the time. This, it wouldn't be community theater without this community of great people. Um, and thank you for your patience, too, as we work through, I, you know, I hate that phrase, unprecedented times. But, you know, it is. And um, as a very wise woman, when well, she left, but a wise woman said to me the other night, after telling me all of the plan A, plan B, and plan C that Interlochen is putting together, she said, we're doing our best, and we probably won't get everything right, but we're doing our best. And I thought, that, that pretty much sums up the situation, and, and so I wanted to share that. So, um, any public comment? And Gary has his microphone on a stick. <laughs> Oh, now they're all shy. <laughs> Hi there. Um, I wanted to thank the Board of Trustees for their good financial stewardship. It's really hard to, uh, to run a theater company in general, uh, but I appreciate the fiscal responsibility. Uh, so I have a question for Chris. Last year you stood up and told us that you were going to do a formal search. That didn't actually happen. I'd like you to uh, give some explanation as to why, what happened, and why the membership wasn't uh, made aware of what was happening. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> so we, uh, we had a committee uh, that was on the board that was dedicated uh, to a search. And we started going through a timeline of what that was going to look like and where it would fit best with the organization. And uh, when we started outlining uh, what that would look like and how it would coordinate with GALA, uh, that being really the, the quintessential determining factor of starting the search because it didn't seem like it was the best idea to put someone in charge of the organization that didn't understand the most important fundraising uh, aspect uh, of, of the institution. Um, so the search wasn't going to be conducted uh, until uh, uh, later this year after GALA uh, is when it was going to start. Uh, and uh, the board also uh, had a uh, retreat and we outlined uh, what our goals for um, you know, the strategy for the organization. And it was amazing that uh, you know, talking about uh, a new executive director was not something that was listed on listed as a priority. There were a number of other things that were listed as a priority. Um, and then, uh, you know, we had a setup where, um, you know, Deb's uh, circumstances uh, changed. 
uh, and um, you know enabled us uh, to consider uh, having her stay on uh, for a longer period of time. And so the uh, committee that was charged with looking for the executive director weighed um, the uh, benefits of having her stay in place uh, and weighed the um, uh, strategic plan initiatives that we were focused on. Um, you know, theater management's another great example, uh, taking the investment and putting it into a contact management system. I'd love to stand here and say that we see all the fruits of that labor at this point, but I'd be lying. Uh, I don't think any of you would believe me. Uh, but uh, you know, when I when I started on the board, uh, there were uh, four or five different Excel spreadsheet contact systems uh, for sending information out to people, uh, and you know, there was no coordination between the ticketing system and the and the email list and. You know, in this day and age, uh, you know that's not that's not going to work for an organization. So, um, looking through all of those variables, uh, you know, and I'd, I'd say the final thing is, you know, as president of the board, um, you know, I like the terminology: a bird in hand is worth two in the bush. And so, when you have someone that uh, you know, demonstrates uh, the capability to, uh, you know, function in that capacity. Uh, what are the odds after an extended search that we'd end up with someone that was any better or equivalent? And I think that, you know, as I outlined in opening comments and, you know, was spoken about by, uh, you know, Chuck, um, when you look at the programs that were rolled out and the amount of information that someone would have to digest in order to, uh, you know, apply and succeed in getting in getting those funds from those federal programs, and you see that a nonprofit is outperforming four business organizations that have an entire HR team and an entire legal team and an entire finance team, and and you know, our organizations outperforming them from an execution standpoint. I think that speaks to the caliber of leadership that we have at the organization and the volunteers that are assisting with it. And so why jeopardize that cohesive uh, you know, nature of your staff uh, with that? Uh, <clears throat> well, I guess I would, I would finalize with it to this extent, which is if I look at where we are and I look at where we could be, I'm pretty proud of where we are and I shudder to think of where we could be if we had focused our efforts on something like that. And while no one knows the future, there's a saying that they, uh, you know, teach Boy Scouts and it's luck favors the prepared. And you guys heard me beat the drum about how important it would be to have six months worth of cash at last year's meeting. And it's not because I knew this was going to happen, but it's a good thing that we got our house in order and, and put ourselves in this position because there'd be a sign on the building. So if that's, if that's not worth more at this point, I guess I, I don't know what else to say in that regard. I can tell you that you know, when the time comes, uh, you know, a proper search will be conducted and we've put everything in place to be able to do that when it's appropriate and necessary, and we will honor that, that word and that obligation. Absolutely, no, we, we will, we will. That said, though, I think most of us, at least for me, we're looking for transparency and, and at least what were you doing and why didn't you do what you said you were going to do. I don't re recall ever seeing any notification other than by word of mouth that that was the decision you made. Mm -hmm. And so I'm asking why didn't you do that? Why didn't you let us know that, that you had decided to change course and go with, which is a beautiful choice, it's not about that. But why didn't you notify us that, that you had changed course from what you had said you were going to do? Yeah, if I, if I kind of outline the timetable oh, for, for when the decisions uh, took place and, and when they were made uh, publicly aware, um, 
there really wasn't, I want to say there's less than three months, less than three months before COVID took place. Uh, and really, you know, quite frankly, even just looking at email communication or, or you know, any other means, this is really the place to, you know, be able to explain that and, and be able to have people ask questions and really, you know, our meetings are all available to the public as well. And so if anybody ever has a question about, you know, what's going on with Playhouse or what decisions are being made, um, you know, my, my email is publicly listed and readily available as is my phone number. And I think I've encouraged in the past that, you know, if any person has a question about something in regards to what the board is doing and, and they want a response or they want to know, you know, what my thought process was with that, I, mean, I encourage that. I created an email address just to deal with that specifically so, you know, that doesn't slip through the cracks. And I would say that, you know, I respond better to phone calls. I'm an old millennial, so, you know, that's my preferred level of communication. I guess if you have to do a text message, that's great. Uh, email's kind of the last, but I would say that, you know, the the initiatives that, that we were focused on and the amount of effort that it took uh, you know, to finalize that decision. Um, you know, we were working on a communication stream and, and, you know, best laid plans, right? So that'd be my best explanation is, is it was something that in my eyes, I would have liked to have had finalized, you know, much earlier at the end of last year. Uh, but, you know, part of, part of having a board is, is making sure that you've got, uh, you know, majority and, and, you know, cohesiveness behind people. So, go ahead, Karen. Yeah, uh, Chris, I'm, I'm on the board, of yeah. course, and I thought we sent out a very detailed email to everybody. We did. So, yeah. okay, yeah, so I was just confused when yeah. people said they didn't know about it because we did send something out. I'm just basing it on our, our latest, you know, uh, email list that we're still finding that we're operating with different lists but Dennis and I you know penned, a, penned an email and sent it out and, you know I think in that one it reiterated that if you had any questions that you know my contact information was at the bottom I think Dennis's was too but I, I understand that you know we're still trying to improve in that regard and you know theater manager will definitely help us with that but as Deb said I mean there's still if you, if you could go in the building, you would see. I mean, there's still <laughs> these giant posters that are taped up with, you know, how to operate throughout it. So, anybody else? Okay. I do want to close again just by saying, you know, as I said before, that really do appreciate everyone's efforts and contributions to the organization. And, you know, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for your efforts. And, you know, God willing, we're going to, you know, see through to the other side of this and we'll be sitting inside uh, next year as opposed to out here because I think, I think one time out here is probably good enough. Let's go back home, right? Thank you. Gary's making his way to Kathy. <laughs> you just want to see me run around the parking lot. You know, I, I, since, I, since I have the microphone, um, we used to pay like over a thousand bucks to get those banners on the side of the truck, and the truck really goes nowhere anymore. So the middle part of that said 16, 17 season. That's how long it's been. So a little bit made that vinyl in the middle all by her little self and we put it up there today I think it's pretty cool so that's a little bit and on that note I'm just going to plug something for those of you that need something to help support the playhouse as of next week we will have Old Town Playhouse masks available for purchase at all events the rest of the summer I just want to put one last plug in for um, making sure that our email system is up to date because we have heard that people didn't get the emails about this meeting and uh, Chris and Dennis did send out a, 
quite lengthy email about the search. If you did not get the email uh, yesterday, I guess it was, about this meeting and about email voting, please make sure that we have your email written down um, so that we can double check it. Because that went through the new system. We know there used to be a lot of problems with vertical response, and that was actually the system that was used when Chris and Dennis sent out the search information. But now we're trying to use uh, Theater Manager exclusively, and um, if you didn't get the email yesterday about this meeting, please let us know so that we can double check your email in the system. Thank you. Oh. I have a motion to adjourn. Bill Murphy. <laughs> and I was second. Michelle. Okay. All in favor of adjourning. Anyone want to stick around longer? The board is going to stick around and elect new officers. Uh, so meeting adjourned. Thank you.